I've built houses for almost 30 years and I work with some fantastic electricians, but I honestly have no idea what I'm doing here. This, this really truly feels like my first day on the job. <laughs> Hopefully I'm off the road here. CJ! Matt! Oh man, it is tight over here. Welcome to the job site, buddy. I almost got run over on the way to the Well, you gotta ship. be careful. Hopefully, you know, let's back up. Uh, it's a busy road, but we're, you know, we're working close to San Francisco, so it's not, you know, it's not the, the, the calmest road. So this is a remodel project, I guess, right? Yep. It's a remodel. Um, it's a little bigger than meets the eye, but you want to head in? Yeah, man. Let's go. Check it out. Build Original Series, hosted by Matt Reisinger. Talking Trades, brought to you by Front Door and Sashco. Remodel, I'm guessing this is maybe 70s based on the tile and the trellis I'm seeing here. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not the newest, so they're going <laughs> through a full rehab. I mean, it's a remodel, but there's not, uh, there's not a sheet insulation or drywall in here. Oh my goodness, look at the view. I had no idea on the street this is what we were gonna see. It looks a little bigger once you get in here, huh? Wow, this is fantastic. Dang, look at the, which bridge is that? That's Richmond St. Rafael Bridge. Golden Gate Bridge is right over. We're looking, that way San Francisco, we got San Quentin, the prison behind us, so. So we're straight through the fog, San Fran. Pretty typical work day for you on a job site, right? Yeah, we're lucky, man. We get to work in some cool places. So, you, you know, here? yesterday we were in wine country and now we're, you know, right couple in the miles city. from San Francisco, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's not bad. I think that's one cool thing about being an electrician is, you know, you're not stuck in a cubicle somewhere doing the same thing every day, pushing papers. Every day is a little bit different. Yeah, we might have a desk out, but it's not going to be in an office. It's going to be right here. Yeah. We'll, we'll eat lunch at it. We'll do we'll read plans at it. But this is the office, man. It's pretty fabulous. It's not bad. So I have no idea what I'm doing electrical, but I'm your apprentice today. You think you could teach me a few things, boss? Yeah, I think I could show you the ropes. I'll uh, see if you can drill some holes and pull some wire. You want to see how we do it? Let's do it, brother. Okay, cool. Let's go. Right, Matt. Typical fashion, custom home, things change. Um, Those custom builders do make changes, don't they? It's not a big deal. We're always ready for it. But in this case, they added a couple receptacles on this back wall. Okay. So it's a couple of elevations changed. We need some rump. Wait, you've done some electrical, right? Oh, yeah, totally. I That's need wire, right? What? Romex. Romex. 12 2. Wire. Grab that. I'm okay. going to get going on the layout. 17 4, is that what you said? 12 2, man. 12 2, right. right. I totally know what that is. Okay, I'm going to grab some. Okay, tools. I'll, I'll, right I'll start the layout. Wire. Okay, 10 4. What did he say again? 12 2? Is that what he said? I wonder which one of these is 12 2. Where is it written on here? 12 2. What is this? Matt, 14 it's 3. Right, it's right there, Matt. Yeah, yeah, I'll be I'll be right there. What's... The, the yellow one. Oh, the ye yeah, yeah, that's the one I was grabbing. Got, Got it. it. Okay, all right, so we got some 12 2. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 dude, 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 dude. Easy, Tiger. This is, this is not how we do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, we got tools for this, Matt. Look at how terrible that looks. You're gonna run that through the wall. Here, let me go ahead and get it all. Here, no, just drop it, and we'll we'll start fresh. I'll I'll show you what we use. This. How about a wire wheel? Check it out. This is loaded up in here, ready to go. You rock and roll nice and flat when you pull it off. So what we're doing is we're actually just gonna see this holes that already lined up. Uh -huh. We're just running another cable from one box to the other. Easy peasy. Okay, all right. So from one box to another, I gotta run another cable. All right, all right. I'm sure I'm sure this is probably the way to do this, right? All right. Ooh, you just eat nice and flat, nice and flat. Nice okay, and flat. nice and flat. We okay. like our stuff to look good around here. Yeah, that's good. I, I do like that about you. Yeah, you're all see you're all tangled up on your old roll. You get you get this mess. I think I got a splinter, boss. Yeah, you'll get over it. We got tweezers in the truck. <laughs> Okay, easy, easy. Let me out, let me help you out. It should see we we use lasers to drill these holes for a reason. You did? It really? should be really easy. Yep, there you go. I thought that you just like went on your hip and drilled them like this. So you see how nice they are? Uh-huh. So it's simple, not that big of a deal. We just set up a laser, it gives us a nice plane. That's what we drill to. 
And it, I think it helps out a couple other trades, but you know, it's nice straight holes. It doesn't ha uh, hurt that it looks good. I like it. All right, now how do we, how do we attach a box? All right, so we're gonna need, I'm gonna need to do some more tools for that and we'll start up and I'll show you. Okay. I totally screwed this up. Let's see if I can get this back in and he won't even notice. I know these, this, this is copper wire. This is not inexpensive. Maybe if I shove it back in, no one will notice that I screwed this up. Oh yeah, totally good. I think that'll be much better. No one's gonna know. Oh yeah, good as new. All right, so my first day in the job, I want the boss to feel like I'm always staying busy. I noticed this wall didn't have any outlets, so I'm gonna be a little proactive here. We're gonna add an outlet. I wonder what height this needs to be. Probably right about there. That's probably right, right? Uh, so then I need to drill for it to... Uh... Okay, that's backwards. There we go, that's forwards. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm having, I'm having troubles getting through here, CJ. What do you got there? I got a paddle bit, right? We got better tools. That's got, not the right bit? We got way better oh. tools. Check out the super hog, one inch auger. Dude, you let me try that right guy now. out. Try that. Oh my gosh, now that yeah. looks money. It's gonna go right through, so be careful. Oh my hey, gosh. But I, I'm sorry to break the bad news. Yeah, a couple I got, things. I got apprentice, it. Apprentice, uh huh. always got to slow down. Yep. You got to read the plans. Oh, I didn't look at the plans. What's this? This is a doorway, but. Oh, that's a temp. I don't think we can put a receptacle there. <laughs> Why are we going to run wires through here? I think I might have messed that yeah, up, boss. Just, just slow down. Sorry I'll, about I'll that. Go step by step. Okay, all, all right. right. That's a pretty sweet little bag right here. I like that. I got that. I got this thing, one of these with bubbles on it. We got Nipex. These are like something that does cutting or maybe this is for your fingernails. I think it's for fingernails. Those Nipexes are nice. There's this thing, which is the same thing, but slightly different. And then there's this guy, which I think is for- You found the tool bag. Stripping, but well, I can't open it. Baby steps, we're moving along. Okay. So again, apprentice, you, we gotta slow down. <laughs> I know you, I mean, these are nice tools, but. I, I like tools. But we gotta, we gotta. <laughs> I'm a big fan of tools. Do you but, get to own tools as an electrician? The, all we got joked about that we got the shiny tools. You yeah, know? you do. But I like show, it. I'm gonna show you how to wire a receptacle. Um, it's kind of at that stage right now where we're getting ready for closing. Okay. And what we do is we actually are stripping out and uh, uh, making up our receptacles, and when I say making up, it's like we're, we're stripping out the wires, and we're actually making the connections now. Okay. Um, during rough-in, so that huh. all our all our wires are nicely tucked in the box. Yep. And the mess that we're making from cutting and stuff is happening during rough, and then after drywall and finish comes in, that's when we come back and trim out, so it's really clean. Got it. Right. There's very little. So you don't put actual it. outlets in right now. No. So no receptacles, no switches, no dimmers until trim out. Right, so we come back after paint, but we barely have to do anything at that point. We're just connecting the device. We don't have to do the so messy work now is where I'm getting at. Got it. Let's okay. Over here, I'll show you. Can we show me how to do one. I brought the tools, boss. So safety first, but we're working with razor knives. Ooh, razor knives. Okay, be careful with these kids. Got it. All right. So what am I doing? So flat, nice is what you want, and. If you've ever stripped Romex, there's you want to be center of the wire. Okay. But again, you got to keep your finger and hands away from the blade. I mean, yep. we're talking surgical. Yes. You can cut your <laughs> surgical, real surgical fast. sharp. Yeah. <laughs> so we're actually right in the back of the box, and I'm going to show you on a long one. We're going to follow it along. Okay. And you're and again, right in the middle. It's this is where an apprentice will get cut quick. But once you're actually started, you're not worried about. Keep your that, hand away. That middle conductor, because there's a ground, and it's a bare wire, and you can actually guide right along that. Okay. 
And, and that's why we're cutting down the center. Yep, and that's why we're cutting down the center. Because it's a bare ground wire. Yep, and then check this out. Peel that apart and see how easy that is. Okay, so this is a three wire. This was a 12 two, is that right? It's a 12 two, but it's kind of deceiving, right? They don't count the ground as a wire. And there's paper in there. There is, so that just is huh. a, an insulator for that ground. Not really an insulator, but it's a, you know, I don't actually know why they put that cardboard in there. <laughs> I think I know everything, but I have no idea why that paper is in there. I just did stump, stump the chump right here. Yeah. So we pull it all out. And again, I left this one really long, but we'll pull it out like that. Okay. And then can you get me those uh, side cutters you had, those real nice red ones? These Nipex, is that yeah. how you pronounce it? And so a couple ways you can do this. You could definitely get your blade in there, but yeah. what I like to train is again, safety. So the least we have to use this, the better. Yeah, You're Makes not sense. gonna cut yourself. And then, okay, so I then you help make these... sure you hold these up. Okay. And you're only cutting that sheathing. We want to get rid of this stuff. And how far back am I going? As far as I, I can? I don't want, I, a rule of thumb is about an inch of insulation in the box. Okay. But not too much. But again, you don't want to strip it too far back out because this insulation is actually there to protect these wires. Got it. So it's an abrasion thing. You don't want to cut too, too back. So that looks Makes absolutely sense. perfect. My turn? <clears throat> yep. So that's all you, bud. Actually, you know, let's shorten these up. I actually like to use these as a, ju a judge to get my wire length. Ah. We all kind of use the same ones and I'll show you why later, but this six inches of code is six inches of minimum is code. We like it a little longer. That looks like eight maybe. So I like to cut it here and you're good to go, bud. Let's see if you got it. Now, okay, watch those fingers. I'm going we don't, up. We don't want to use the first aid kit on your first day. No, first aid kit on the first day. Is and what I would do is now. move that hand up behind. Now you're, go you're good to go. Okay, all right. And after you make up about, I don't know, we got two, three hundred receptacles on this job, you'll be a pro bubble. Let's be honest, I don't know a thing about electrical CJ. <laughs> You're looking good, man. <laughs> I've built houses for almost 30 years and I work with some fantastic electricians, but I honestly have no idea what I'm doing here. This, this really, truly feels like my first day on the job. Okay. Well, you're making it look easy. All right, so that's... Yep, so we get rid of all the paper. And you just you just tear the paper yeah, off, pa right? Yeah, tear, tear it off. Oh, that thing's... Okay, all right. Mine is not nearly as clean as yours. Okay, so the wires are sticking out. Now what do we do? So I want to show you a couple of things. You can, you can use whatever you want as a length gauge, but this is kind of our rule of thumb. We want to be able to leave a zigzag like that. See how it, it looks like an accordion and it uh -huh. goes right back in that box. Okay. So let's say I want my wires to finish up like this. So I'm going to cut them and you can see yeah, there's that's a, our length that we want. So there's a method to this. This wasn't just a random length, <clears throat> nope. random shove those and wires in. No. And again, it, it varies on the box. If you go in the top of the box, if you got a two gang, but this is, we're just making up a single gang box. So that's how, that's our finished length. So whatever this finished length is now, you can use whatever you want. I just like to use a pair of pliers. I can eyeball about an inch shy. Okay. So we're we'll going to do that same thing on this side, and we're going to get them. We're going to even them all up. And I'm going to just show you on one how we do this. We always start with the ground first. It's just a rule of thumb. It was how I was taught as a young whippersnapper. Okay. So you put the black and the white up, oh. and now we've got both grounds together. So all together. I'm doing is grounds, and this is what we call pigtailing an outlet. See how we have this scrap? It wasn't all waste. We're going to use this. Huh. So see this bear? We got a couple more in here. Okay. Right? So what I like to do is yank those out. Holy cow, right? you're fast. So we're going to use this. this is, these are our pigtails. So instead of stabbing these in the back of the device that I know you've taken apart in an old house. Oh, yeah. And I've seen they stab them in the back of the device. Long story short, the, that's a failure point. Hmm. If the receptacle fails, you're actually breaking your chain. See, I just oh, like yeah. to imagine it as a chain yep. or a link. And so when we're actually doing this, we're taking that device out of the equation and there's no failure point and I'm going to show you how. Okay. So we need our linemen. We've seen these, but super important purpose. Pretty common. Um, so I'm going to start on the ground. Yeah, really common. I mean, these are, these are your Three, Your main, three tools. main tools. You know, you got a pair of wire strippers, we got a pair of side cutters, and we got a pair of linemans. I, I mean, like you it. can keep yourself out of trouble as an electrician with these three tools. And with these three tools, we're talking, these are not inexpensive, right? This is probably 20, 30 bucks per, right? Yeah, and it adds up quick. I mean, you get one of these swiped, there's a couple grand, but 
you know, you buy once and that's kind of our motto. And mm -hmm. we like to stick with the brands that we know are going to last. I mean, I've worked with guys that have literally had their lineman pliers since their apprenticeship oh and they, they're 25 years into the wow. trade. So, you know, if you don't cut live wires and blow them up, they'll last for a while. That's awesome. Okay. So, sorry, keep going boss. So I want to show you how we pigtail, right? So I already showed you, we pulled these out of a scrap. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with the ground. Um, actually, I'm going to leave the ground for you because it's, it's going to be a little easier. That's but I'm going to show you easier. How, how we do the stripping and then you can practice on the ground. So okay. like I said, I, I would normally start with the ground, but we're fine. As long as you get these untangled and you have them paired out really nicely, you'll see why that matters. Okay. I'm going to start with our neutral. And so what we're doing here is just stripping off this sheathing. And, and, I, and how did you know neutral was white? Neutral is white because the National Electric Code dictates our wire colors. Ah. And so in Northern America, um, our neutral conductor and a 120 volt system is always white. Okay. And sometimes in the commercial applications, they'll do a gray, but it's a whole nother thing. So white is always neutral. We have bare grounds. Um, I've, I've heard overseas them call them earths and uh, they're always green. Okay. And we, but in a commercial application, if we're pulling these, or if we're using conduit, we're using an insulated one, but it's just a ground wire, so it doesn't need to be insulated. Okay. And this has always been industry standard. And then black is our ungrounded conductor or hot. Got it. So I just stripped those out and they're just past like an inch. So I'd say like an inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter. You can certainly sh strip longer and I'll show you why it doesn't matter. So this is our pigtail wire. Okay. So again, I'm taking these two conductors and I'm tying them together. So I'm gonna strip this, this is our pigtail. And this is really important as far as like quality goes. And again, one of the first things you'll learn as an apprentice is how to make a good connection. Um, we're going to line up all those installations. Like three nice. hot dogs right next yep, to each right other. Right next to each other. And I like to give it a little bit. I like to start at that braid. And you'll see when I say braid, why? I just kind of start it. I triangulate them. And then when you're grabbing these with these linemen, okay. only grab that tip and just start that braid real nicely. And only grab that tip. So you're not grabbing all the way down. No, because you don't want to gnarl up this, this copper. Um, the more nicks you get in a copper, you can fracture that and then that wire can actually break later and you won't even know it. That'd be so bad. it's pretty important to only grab that tip okay. and we're going to give it, this is what we call a pre-twist. This by no means is required. Um, you'll see a lot of guys just group those together, zip on a wire nut and they're done. But to me and most uh, trained and proud electricians, pre-twist. Pre-twist. And so there's in other words, you're tying them together before you even put a wire nut on. Um, my wire nut's really just there to insulate and hold those conductors. I mean, look at this connection. That's, that's, a, that's a solid connection. Yeah. So again, I'm going to make sure they're tight after I just pulled on them. Nice. And I like the rule of thumb is a nice three nice braids, but we got four or five mm -hmm. and you'll see why. And then a couple, you don't got to get wild. It doesn't got to go all the way down, but this is a nice connection okay. and we're going to trim off that top that you right? were messing and I with. want you to leave at least three to three and a half braids braids okay and yeah. that that ugly part's gone we got a nice solid connection and I'm gonna grab some wire nuts back here and how do you know which size wire nut goes <coughs> with this well so you on the bag from the manufacturer they have a chart on the back okay so they'll tell you in wire size and number of connectors. So for example, I don't know off the top of my head, but if we grab this bag, this is probably rated for four to five number 12s. And that's how it'll read on the back of the bag. So Got this it. is a number 12 wire. We have three of them. We're perfectly in compliance with this. Okay. And again, all I'm doing with this wire net is twisting it on, get it nice and tight. And it's there interesting, it this wire nut has a little extra kind of shield on there. Is that normal? I don't remember that when I was a kid. Um, so these do have a little rubber skirt on them and it's just the manufacturer's option. Uh, I do like them. Um, it makes a really nice connection if you were to vinyl wrap them. So there's, there is pros and cons. Again, I mean, I could show you a handful of different styles and sizes that we run. Um, you know, so they yeah. all look different. They look a little Again, different. they're all purpose and you'll learn over time being an apprentice what all these are for. Got it. Okay. Yes, boss. But I'm going to let you rock and roll on this one, but I'm going to show you kind of how we tuck these wires in the box before I get too far. Okay. So you're going to be working on these grounds. We're going to do these hots later and watch this. So remember when I gave you that, that distance, Yep. this is why we like to tuck it in nice and slow. And look at this. 
oh, that's, that's nice. where that's going to live. And see, that's why we, and again, it's going to vary box to box. But you and it just takes a couple. Back. I <laughs> want that in the back because we need room for this device to live in there. Got it. And then watch this. Up, down. Look at that. That's beautiful. Absolutely perfect. So now look at this. This is how it'll live, all three of them, ground, neutral, hot. Like three little soldiers. Little soldiers out of the ready area. to go. They'll drywall, and really all we'll have to do is come back, pull that Pop out. That look out. at that. Oh, that's so that's beautiful. why I call it the accordion. That's a thing of beauty, right? Um, or a W. Look at it. Done. Up and down. Yep. Looks like a W. So that's just that's how we make up the most basic receptacle. I like it. Give it a shot. My turn. All right. So I've got the two ground wires. I'm going to grab the pigtail and. I don't want to go this way. I want it to go in the same direction, right? Mm-hmm. And now I need to line them up like a hot dog, three little hot dogs together. Should I snip them so they're all the same? Nope. So we're going to snip them right at the end, remember? Oh, that's right. Okay. So it doesn't oh, really matter because you don't have sheathing to line up on the bare ground. So that's why this is the easy one. Okay. So I kind of do a little pre-twist with my fingers. I'm grabbing right at the tip. Yep, and just give them, and wow. it's a learning curve. That's, that wasn't so You'll get good. fast. I said there's two or three hundred on this job. You'll you'll be good after <laughs> By this. By the time I do two or three hundred, <clears throat> I'll probably have pretty good gauge on it. And I? just a note too, um, we're making up a receptacle. This is where you're going to plug things in. Okay. But this is a very similar concept of how we'll connect a light, whether it be a recess light or a wall box. You're pretty close. See, so you oh, got a nice braid. So, see, you got more ugly than I had. Okay. But yeah, you can you can you can just cut that right so off. So then I'm counting one, two, three, four braids. I'd start from the top, and I would just cut off the ugly, and you're good to go. Okay. So there's the ugly. Boom. And okay. we'll grab a wire net, same size I had, and, and we'll give it a good twist and a I'm nice connection. Kind of push and twist, and that wire nut, I believe, has a kind of a screw in the inside that. That kind of grabs on yep. the wire, right? Yeah, so it's a coil, and it actually looks like a spring. So a rule of thumb, too, is not to reuse wire nuts. If we were to take this off, if you wanted to modify it, Throw it away. once that, string, that spring is stretched in there, it's a good idea to just toss it. Got it. Don't ever use them twice. Okay, now this part that you made look really easy, I have a feeling, is not easy. Your so, fingers will get used to it. So I'd so go up. Going up, and then I go down. Yep. And then I go up. And then push it in. Push it in. Okay, you made that look way easy. <laughs> You've done this before. Now, do I kind of hold it and yeah. go up? There you go. And then I go down, and then I go up, and I'm longer. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, so shove that back. I wouldn't in. fire you because I know you're an apprentice and this it's going to take a little while. This is my while. first day, and I'm yeah. honestly a very much a newbie on electrical. There we go. Not bad. Not too bad. We got the hot to go. So if I have uh, 200 of these, this is going to be a long day for me on the first day. I'll tell you, when I first started 20 years ago, uh, you know, you build your fingertip calluses up pretty quick on yeah, the job. I but you do. again, it's all working with your hands. It's it's trades, man. Love it. Love it. It's fun. Get to use tools, power tools, hand tools. Okay, now on the stripper, is there a guide that tells me which hole I need to strip on? Yep. So you're going to be. Does it say number 12 in there? It's going to be one of these bottom twos. So it's that bottom, bottom. Okay, the very bottom. And I'm, I think I heard you say. Really important is to. Inch and a quarter. Squeeze it and then pull straight. Don't do the twist. Okay, because I'll twist. show you why on a sample. Watch this. If you, this is all just caring about your craft. It's really easy to go like this and, and turn it. But look, I just fractured that wire. You'll uh, see a lot of guys do this. But so you get a good training. It's really a nice set of, of uh, strippers and just pull straight off. Got it. Because otherwise, you put a little ding on the yeah, wire. Yeah, you don't which, want that ding. It's a fracture. To... It's just like a piece of wood. You know, you get a crack in it, and it's going to be an easy point for it to break. And pull them straight out. Okay. There it is. And then these two with the. Let's, do, let's start with the new strip. So remember, I already messed that guy up. Okay, that's right. So you can cut that off. It's plenty long. Okay, so. Strip here, and you just eyeball this inch and an eighth? It's totally fine to eyeball. Okay. And again, you'll be doing this so much that you're you, know, you could do, or, you know, a couple months in, our apprentices can do this with their eyes closed. Yeah, but that's right. Okay, so I kind of start the hand, then linesman's pliers. And you got your insulations all lined up? Uh, not very well now. Is that because my... 
conductors are different Yeah, lengths. what I like to do, you could do this, you could groom it a little bit. It's probably going to be fine, Matt, you know? Groom it a the little bit? The first one won't be perfect. <laughs> this is my second one. <laughs> oh, number two. Literally in my life. Like uh, I said, so you got three wires per box. Again, times about 200. I'm no mathematician, but I think it's around 600 connections. All the all the and electricians watching this are making fun of me right now on this video. Hey, you're pre-twisted, and you've the half the battle. That's a big debate, is if the pre-twist. Because honestly, some of these boxes of the wire nets will say that they will pre-twist for you. Again, my theory on it is this takes what another minute per conductor yep. instead of just stabbing a wire nut on. Okay, and look at that up. connection. That's that looks beautiful. Pretty tight. That's pretty good, Matt. That's not bad, huh? Fifty years old. I think I could change careers now. General contractor turned electrician. You know, I know. I actually know several builders, including my business partner Tim, who later in life went back and took some of the tests because they love electrical. That's so fascinating. There's yeah. so much to learn. Uh, this is a great trade. Well, I've joked many times i love electrical but if i were to do that transition maybe when i'm in my 50s i'll do uh, i want to be a cabinet maker uh, i think I a lot of that, that again yeah. i think it's the precision for for some of these guys that or gals that don't know what they want to do you might start as an electrician and decide that when you see the tile setter you know laying down yeah. those nice tile right. you're you'll change it yeah I and mean, the beauty of this job too is there's so many people you get to know on the job that you know when you need something done at your house there's probably somebody you can call for advice imagine too you're just an apprentice for a, a year and you decide later that you want to go back to school and be an architect yeah you still have these uh trade skills under trade your skills. belt you're They're definitely going to use this at home if you needed to how do i do not bad not bad it's a little not fantastic I, we want it to look like this <laughs> but watch i can fix it real quick you pull it out and if you just yeah mine again, wasn't as pretty you go up but you'll get it, Matt. You'll get it. All right. Down. And um, just a total nerd detail, what we like to do at CNC Electric is have our wire nuts pointing up. Ah, uh, makes sense. And because for a couple reasons, if they're upside down, they're just little buckets uh, that can collect yeah. water. Now, right. I know we're inside, but just years Still. of dust. Um, again, if you have a choice, up. Go up. There's no rule to it, but it's a kind of a rule here. We kind of standardized everything, but look at that. Love it, CJ. You just made up your first, uh, well, maybe not your first, but. My second. Maybe your second. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Nice work. All right, buddy. Hey, CJ, what's the electricians doing on the roof today? Uh, you know, every job's a little different. And in this case, ultra modern design, flat roof. Yep. Um, 70s remodel. So, uh, what they did for us here, and for a couple of different reasons, it helped us out is they furred up the ceiling and ran sleepers and angled it for all the drainage, but it gave us a perfect wall cavity or ceiling uh, cavity to run our wires in. Because downstairs, you don't have any ceiling. Nope, this is ceiling, Matt. This is all TNG. Yep. So, that's, that's ceiling. Got it. Yeah, there's no space without this. No, it helped out a lot. I was worried originally when I looked at the plans thinking, where are we going to run all these wires? So luckily they had to do this for a few different reasons. And again, perfect place to run wires. Yeah, now we didn't get it in the crawl space, but you have a crawl space on this job too, don't you? I do. I do. And uh, uh, and I suspect as an electrician, you get to go on the roof, you get to go in the crawl space. Some days are hot, some days are cold. You never you quite know. That's definitely on the resume when you're you know signing up for any trade is yeah. tight spaces. Not that big of a deal. You can get used to it quick. Uh, attics, hot attics, not that big of a deal. Again, it's not every day. Um, and again, you know, job site hazards and stuff like that. You got to watch out for. Man, I'll take that over an office any day, personally. Well, I mean, I just listed off the worsts, and it still sounds better. Still not bad at all. <laughs> all right, so let's close out today. This was Apprentice Day with me. You showed me a couple of the ropes. Give us some advice for the young person who's uh, about to start their apprentice as an electrician. What advice do you have for them? I, you know, you're working as an apprentice. It's that mentor, you know, uh, a structure where you're you're actually learning from someone that's done it. Mm -hmm. So slow down and the best advice is even if you're learning from someone that you might not agree with uh, you're going to be able to take a little bit of information so soak it up these guys are pros yep. um, learn as much as you can from any journeyman or any experienced uh, tradesman and uh, and you know just soak it up be a sponge yeah yeah that's right 
And uh, how about advice for those calluses that I formed after doing 200 <laughs> outlets? Today? I don't know. We'll get you some moisturizer, you know, and we'll, <laughs> but again, they build up. You'll get used to it. So probably on day two, the calluses won't be there, but yeah. by the end of the month on my first month, I bet I'll be just fine on that, right? Yeah, you'll be good. They'll, yeah. you'll, they'll, they'll buff out, you know? I had a really fun day learning some electrical. You know, this is definitely a trade that I really don't know much about, mm -hmm. to be honest, as a builder. So I really enjoyed working with you today. A lot of fun. What do you think? Will you hire me, CJ? Yeah. I don't know, man. This that's, uh, whatever the base rate is, the, the build show stuff. I think you're a better host than an think, electrician. Think I should stay we with could, the, we could, you know, just stick to the, the building. It's probably not a bad <laughs> idea. So, CJ, have you been to my studio and seen my job sites? I've never uh, been to Texas. I've never been to Austin, Texas. You know, we need to sit down and talk a little further about the opportunities and why you chose this trade and what success you've seen and what the options are. How about we get on a plane? We fly back to Texas. I'll show you my studio. We'll hit a couple job sites. Here we go. That? I'm on. Let's sign, sign me up. All right, guys. Talking trades. We're talking electrical. It was a fantastic day. We'll see you next time. Next up, I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and show you what they've been doing to encourage young people to join us in the trades. I want to say a huge thanks to my friends at Sashco for sponsoring this Talking Trades series. First off, if you're not familiar with them, Sashco makes a huge line of premium cocks and sealants that I use every day on my high performance builds. They're a family owned company that makes their products in Colorado, but they also have been a massive supporter of trade school education. Now, if you are a trade school teacher watching this video, I wanna tell you about their class pack program, which was designed for you to use in your classroom to educate students about sealant technology and application. Now I've been through a version of this program and it was really fun and educational. You can enhance your curriculum with their expert resources. Learn more at sashco.com backslash trades support. Now, if you aren't a teacher, you can still make a difference in this battle to bolster our trade base. Take the Sashco challenge, volunteer a local trade school in your town, capture the moment, share it on social media and tag Sashco and your reward will be a free case of Lexel as a token of their appreciation for supporting trades education. Thanks again, Sashko, for sponsoring these videos. I want to thank our friends at Front Door for sponsoring this Talking Trade series. If you're not familiar with Front Door, they are reimagining how homeowners maintain and repair their most valuable asset, their home. As the parent company of two leading brands, Front Door brings over 50 years of experience in providing their members with comprehensive options to protect their homes from costly and unexpected breakdowns through their extensive network of pre-qualified professional contractors. American Home Shield has approximately 2 million members and gives homeowners budget protection and convenience, covering up to 23 essential home systems and appliances. Now, Front Door is a cutting edge, one-stop app for home repair and maintenance. Enabled by their stream technology, the app empowers homeowners by connecting them in real time through video chat with pre-qualified experts to diagnose and solve their problems. The Front Door app also offers homeowners a range of other benefits, including DIY tips, discounts, and much more. More information about American Home Shield and Front Door, visit frontdoorhome.com. Now, as the largest provider of home service plans in the nation and a network of approximately 16,000 independent contractors, Front Door is spreading the word and advocating to bring new talent into the pipeline by creating opportunities for young people as plumbers, electricians, and other highly skilled professions. Front Door has also been sponsoring organizations committed to the advancement of the skilled trades like Skills USA and Be Pro Be Proud. I've been to their events. Those are amazing organizations and huge thanks to Front Door for their partnership in this Talking Trade series.